Hello, my name is Avery Fisher Udagawa. I translate Japanese children's literature into English. And today I would like to share a story by Sachiko Kashiwaba. Kashiwaba-san was born in 1953 in Iwate Prefecture in the Tohoku region of Japan. And she has published more than 100 children's books. She has won the prestigious Sankei Shogakukan and Noma Children's Literature Awards in Japan, among other accolades. And her novel, Chikashitsukara no Fushigi na Tabi, uh, which might be translated as Strange Journey from the Basement, was animated as The Wonderland, as the film is called in English, in 2019. Also, her novel, Misaki no Mayoiga, which might be translated as The Abandoned House on the Cape, uh, is coming out as an animated feature film this month, August 2021, when I'm recording this. I had the delight of translating her children's novel, Temple Alley Summer, in the original Kimyoji Yokocho no Natsu, for publication in the United States in July 2021, so last month. Today, I will be reading a story from her collection of stories, Mirakuru Family, Miracle Family. The name of the story in the original is Kagami yo Kagami, and in English, it is Mirror, Mirror. The bathroom at our house has two mirrors. One is the usual type that comes with the sink. The other is a super fancy oval mirror with a wooden frame carved in a floral design. It hangs next to our sink, and I call it the Snow White mirror. Our little bathroom shouldn't need two mirrors, and the Snow White design doesn't exactly fit our lifestyle, given that it's just Dad and me. But really, it's precisely because it's just us two that we have the mirror. My dad gets up every day at 6 a.m. With an unshaven face and bedhead still in his pajamas, he heads to the kitchen. Ever since I was in preschool, our breakfast has been fried eggs, natto, miso soup with tofu and pickled vegetables. As he cracks the eggs and slices the tofu, dad also starts the washing machine and he wakes me up. Jun, get up, up. And he calls this exactly two times. Routines are powerful things. When my dad calls me the second time, I really do get right up. And by the time I head to the kitchen hiking up my pajama pants, breakfast is on the table and the washing machine has started its spin cycle, shaking and clattering. As dad reads the newspaper and I watch TV, we eat. We pass the soy sauce and jab our chopsticks into the crock of pickles with precision timing. Our hands maneuver around each other, never colliding like robot hands in a factory. There's no need to speak. At the end, I say, gochiso sama, thanks for the meal. Then I brush my teeth in the bathroom and change for school. My dad cleans up the kitchen and hangs out the laundry. I'm off, I say. He grunts, oh, or ah. After I leave for school, dad cleans the house, shaves, dresses, and heads down to the shop. He's the second generation owner of a yarn shop. The shop sits on the ground floor and we live right above. About the time Dad raises the shutter, Mr. Murano arrives by bicycle with his packed lunch. Mr. Murano has worked in the shop since my grandfather's time. Neither Dad nor Mr. Murano acts at all like a salesman. When customers arrive, the two men welcome them with irashaimase, and that's it. They go quiet. I have never seen them make small talk or even smile. How a yarn shop run by two silent men can stay afloat is one of the seven wonders of our shopping district. In fact, it's wonder number one. It helps that Dad and Mr. Murano knit. It's a yarn shop, so they should, but anyway, they're good. Even now, Dad hand knits all of my sweaters. His stuff is popular, even with the girls in my class and their moms. If I wear a new design of his to school, the moms will go to the shop to buy yarn and ask for the pattern, so I contribute to the bottom line. From a customer's perspective, I guess our shop offers stylish samples and useful advice. Plus, you can look at yarn for ages and no one will bother you. I suppose that makes for a nice atmosphere, if you can ignore the two geezers knitting in the back. When I get home from school, if it's not a cram school day, I go buy food for our supper. 
Usually I get fried meat cakes or croquettes from the butcher, dried fish from the fish seller, or takeout from the ramen place. Dad closes up shop at seven, I help, and depending on how hungry I am, I either eat ahead or wait and eat with him. Just like at breakfast, I end the meal with gochisol sama. At nine in the evening, Dad finishes his bath. Then he stands in front of the snow white mirror and begins muttering some words. I have never really watched him do this. I've never wanted to watch, but I think he starts with mirror, mirror on the wall. This is his ritual and with it, he transforms into my mom. In summer, he's my mom with only boxers on, but anyway. June, honey, did you do your homework? I got a call from your cram school teacher, Jun. She said your math scores are slipping. Don't you think you've been playing video games way too much? So Akihiro's dad says he'll drop you off at soccer practice on Sunday. I've washed your uniform and put it in the chest of drawers and your new socks are there too. So be sensible and wear them, okay? My mom talks and talks, whiskers and all. I used to think that maybe dad should change into women's clothing for this shtick to make it less strange but I'm used to it now. Okay, what do you want to read today? It's been forever since we read Two Years Vacation by Jules Verne. You love that book. I wish you'd take a few more titles out of the library. When I was your age, Jun, I devoured the Arsène Lupin books. My whiskered mom always reads to me before I sleep. Last year we argued and I finally got her to quit singing me lullabies, but dad turning into mom and mom reading to me never changed. I guess it all serves a purpose. My real mom, the one without facial hair, left us right after I started preschool. She left my dad and she left me. Even though she had abandoned us, I missed her. I ached for her. I hated my dad. I had no clue why my mom had left, but I figured it must be my dad's fault that she'd gone. I guess I'd heard the adults gossip. I get that he's a man of few words, but there's such a thing as too quiet, right? I mean, I'm his neighbor and never hear his voice. The woman who runs the bookshop next door talks about dad this way, even now. When mom left, I cried constantly. I ran off whenever dad tried to hold me. My mother was gone. With her gone, I couldn't sleep. Night after night, I buried my head in my blanket and soaked my pillow with tears. Then dad went out and bought the snow white mirror and he began pretending to be mom. Now stop crying. Starting today, I'll be mom. At night until you can get to sleep, I'll be mom. So try and calm down. With awkward words and an earnest face, dad became whiskered mom. Gross. It makes me laugh to think of it now, but at the time I was boiling mad. But your dad... I tried throwing off my covers, but Whiskered Mom pinned me down. I'm your mom, honey. I'll be mom too now. Just give me a chance. And Stubbly Mom started singing me a lullaby in a hoarse voice. At least I think it was a lullaby. I couldn't make out which song it was. It was sad, like weeping, but I still fell asleep. Each night after that, Dad would stand in front of the snow white mirror to transform, he seemed to need the act of muttering his spell in that exact spot. The mirror helped. Gradually, I got used to Dad's ritual. I accepted that he had two personalities. This became so normal that there were certain things I would tell him only when he was in Dad mode, and certain things I would tell him only when he was Whiskered Mom. The things Dad couldn't tell me, he too would say for when he was Mom. Well, your dad is your dad, isn't he? Can't be helped but he loves you, Jun, and he wants the best for you, and he wants to protect you and make every day a good day for you. He just has trouble saying that out loud, I think. This, my whiskered mom would say without batting an eye. It was the kind of thing both parent and son might remember later with a blush, but in the moment, since I was so used to it, I'd just nod and say, yeah, I know. The mirror was a prop that dad and I needed at first, basically. But now I think I can handle dad okay without it. He, on the other hand, can't stop pretending to be mom. He thinks that if he doesn't become mom, he can't ask me about school and grand school and friends and such. Me, I could just tell him everything while I stir my natto or help him close up shop. 
why should I stop being mom at bedtime? I look forward to this too, you know. Now let's read. Come on, seriously. Hush you into bed. Whiskered mom has muscles. If I take too long, she can just toss me in bed. Can you imagine an 11 year old boy who hasn't beaten his mom in wrestling even once? I am that boy. Lately, I've started teasing a little though. Hey mom, dad still hasn't sold that one sweater he knit in springtime, has he? Which sweater, honey? The salmon pink mohair. Well, that's a store sample, but he sells the samples when the seasons change. Salmon pink works fine for fall. What? They change everything to those chic, dull fall colors except that one, it's weird. It's an accent. Whiskered mom can be really stubborn. Even Mr. Murano has been shaking his head over the salmon pink mohair. He says that dad doesn't wanna sell that sweater, really. If a customer seems to be checking it out, dad will rush it to the back. And then just when it seems he's put it away for good, he'll display it again. Mr. Murano thinks he has someone special in mind for it. The sleeves on that sweater are different lengths, you know, whiskered mom finally tells me. Even I know it's time for some truth now. Well, the piano teacher at that music store across the street played tennis when she was young, I say. I heard her mention once that when she buys ready-made sweaters, the right sleeve always feels too short. Hmm, really? Mm-hmm, I bet Dad heard her say it, too. She always buys navy and gray yarn from us, but I think salmon pink would look great on her. I go to the trouble of saying all that, and yet Whiskered Mom still changes the subject. Well, how about Robinson Crusoe tonight? I guess we'll need the Snow White mirror a little bit longer until my dad can just open up as dad. <laughs>